I'm Ken Bartz, founder and CBO at Monster League Group. And today I'm going to talk about what the top five lenders don't want you to know about conventional loans. Uh, first, we're going to talk about the three reasons people don't do conventional loans that I hear uh, in the marketplace. So the first one is that they think they don't make enough money from a conventional loan. Conventional loans pay less than government loans. Uh, the second thing uh, is that they're harder to do. Right? Full dock loans are tougher to do than a streamline. Right? No doc, no appraisal. Uh, and lastly, uh, it is harder to market to conventional loans than it is to government loans. And so today, I'm going to show you some underlying things that will dispel those beliefs and show you how you can actually make a lot of money in the conventional market. Okay. First and foremost, understanding what the conventional market is is going to help you get past some of your fear of not making money. Okay. In January of 2019, Conventional refinance loans were $112,450 total conventional refinance transactions. The total refinance transactions in January of 19 was 135601 That's The conventional refinances accounted for 82% of the entire refinance the market in that month. In February of 19, conventional refis went up to 117438 out of 144,055, or a total of 81.5%. You see, the market rose in both cases. So there's this preconception that uh, when uh, rates are down, the government market shoots way up and the conventional market doesn't move. Well, the truth of the matter is it moves along with it. Uh, in March of 19, conventional loans went up again, 136,509 conventional refinance transactions out of 167,473. As a percentage, look, stayed the same, 81 and a half. My point is that the conventional market makes up 80% of the industry. 80% okay? of those transactions that are happening on a monthly basis are happening in conventional refinance. 100% okay? of people are competing over 20% or less of the industry. So if you think about it, the FHA, v, you know, FHA and VA... Is about 20%, and every lender, right? 100% market saturation. Do you know anybody that doesn't do a Govy loan? Everybody does. Everybody's fishing in this little tiny pool of, of potential uh, transactions. Additionally, every one of those, 100% of those, are triggered. So even if you're able to generate one of these, you are getting 100% competition. People are competing with you. They're going after the exact same borrower at the exact same time from an initial marketing standpoint. And then they're waiting for you to go ahead and get them uh, interested. And then they're coming behind you and competing again. Okay? In 80% of the market, right, I'm going to be kind and say 10% of the total market goes after this 80%. And it's probably less. It's probably like 5% of the market. Considering that that uh, the largest lender only has about a six or seven percent market share, uh, the top five lenders have mm, roughly about eleven or twelve percent market share. Uh, that's where this is. Most of this is being done. Uh, the other uh, percentage that's, that's going after this is nominal. Right? But this is a huge, huge market, and, and most people, uh, a vast majority, ninety percent of the market is not taking advantage of the largest pool of potential customers. So let me put it to you in perspective of if you were going to build a business plan today. So you want to go out and raise money, raise capital, and the first thing you need to do is put together a business plan. And your business plan is this. Uh, I am going to uh, go after a marketplace that has uh, significantly less prospects. Okay, so let's talk about that. Uh, the FHA and VA marketplace FHA total data is 6.7 rec million records. VA total records is 2.6 million. 2.6, sorry. So that's a total of 9.3 million potential customers total in that. Uh, and that's not even talking about what's marketable there. Let's just say total. Uh, the conventional space, 35 million. Okay. So you're talking about something that, that is 70% uh, less, 70% uh, smaller marketplace, okay, with 
that only accounts for 20% of the transactions, okay, and has 100% market penetration and saturation with 100% trigger. Would you put that in your business plan and try to raise capital? Would you take that in front of an investor? Does that sound like a good idea? To me, that sounds like the definition of insanity. That sounds like you're just running headlong into a problem. And here's the problem for most people. For most people, you don't have the money. It, it, it becomes increasingly hard to generate business in this segment. And it drives up the cost of these. So let's talk about what we talked about, fear number one, which is I can't make as much money in the conventional space as I can because uh, I can't get paid as much on, on the individual transaction. Well, two things are going against you. The more market saturation, right, what happens is it drives down the actual average cost per loan. I mean, the average uh, loan amount in, the, in that particular data pool. So the average loan amount that you see in the government space is much lower than you see in the conventional space. So even though you're getting a higher percentage, you're getting a higher percentage on less. And then you have to take into account, what is my cost to acquire this customer? Uh, your cost to acquire this is anywhere from a third to two thirds more than it is in the conventional space if you know what you're doing. In fact, I would argue that it's two thirds more if you really know what you're doing in the conventional space. And I'll show you a little bit more about what I mean by knowing what you're doing in a minute. But as a business plan, what would be better, <laughs> right? To go after a, a, a place where you have a, a higher uh, average loan amount, um, you have a lower cost to acquire, um, and honestly, is much more scalable because there's an enormous amount of data, and there is also 80% uh, of the 80% of the business comes from that particular market segment. Problem number two: it's harder to to do a conventional loan. There's not much that I can say about. That. In that, yes, it is more difficult to do a full doc transaction. And yes, uh, having to figure out debt ratios and go through that when you can just say, here's your interest rate, no documentation, you know, uh, you don't need an appraisal, let's just wrap this thing up. I can't argue against that. But what I can argue is that that is not a really uh, rate uh, insulated environment. It's not a good environment to be in long term or scale wise. And here's why. Because most of you probably experienced this in 2018. Rates jumped up and everybody said, okay, well, let's go sell cash out. Well, let's talk about that. So institutionally, uh, from a sales perspective, loan officers didn't really know what to do because they'd only ever worked in one transaction. So the way they tried to sell cash out at that point was, oh, what's your current interest rate? Oh, well, we couldn't beat that today. Uh, do you have any debt or need any cash? So to paraphrase, hey, uh, we couldn't offer you anything but a worse deal. How would you like a worse deal with some cash? Doesn't sound like a good way to do business, right? Um, and then, once sales did catch up, right, then all the lenders realized they had another problem. And the other problem was their infrastructure wasn't right. Institutionally, they weren't aligned to do full doc loans. So now they dumped a whole bunch of full doc loans on processing, and processing couldn't do anything with them, right? So this is a problem. You always have to have conventional. I'm not saying... It would be really crazy for me to argue that when there's a whole bunch of low-hanging fruit and streamlines, that you don't go after some of those, right? But if that's all you're doing, then really you're setting yourself up to, to, to be that business plan that I just talked about, which is not something I would think that you would invest in if you were an investor and somebody came to you with, a diff with, with that story, right? So um, the, the idea is that... that in order to scale your business long term, be able to go to bed at night not worrying about what the interest rates do, uh, being able to do full doc loans is that protection. Right? You also know that you have this giant piece of the marketplace that look, even before Streamline started jumping, it was 112,000 of them. Right? So in January was when rates started to come down. Right? There was already 112,000 of these being done. Out of a total of uh, 135,000, that means that only 21,000 uh, VA and FHA loans were being done that month. And I'm going to tell you what, out of those, I'm going to bet you most of those were probably cash out anyway, full dot loans, right? You see the big jump here to 167,000, which is a percentage of the, of, didn't change very much, it's still 81%, 81.5%. 
Now what you're seeing is an influx of streamlines. So this is the wave that these are riding, but this is a very stable uh, trend line here. So if you want to have a safe, scalable um, business that you can go to bed at night and not worry about whether the bond market is going to jump tomorrow or what's going to happen, then you absolutely positively have to add conventional to your, to your arsenal. And I would suggest that it be a portion, uh, you know, at times you can have more or less, but you always have to have this in, in your back pocket. Okay. So the, the third reason that, that, that most people don't market in the, or go after conventional refinance transactions are that they don't know how to market, right? And that would go against my argument that it's cheaper to acquire, right? If you don't know how to market, uh, the, the big problem is that the conventional universe is 35 million records minimum. Okay, so that's the Pacific Ocean, right? The uh, the FHA is 6.7, and the VA equals uh, 2.6, 2.6 million. Um, so you can see that that you know that it's so much easier. This is a you know this is a pond, right? This is a great lake. A little harder to fish in 6.7 versus 2.6. But this is the Pacific Ocean. It's the biggest and deepest, right? So, you know, this is where the problem really exists. Because if you just throw your rod into the into the Pacific Ocean and hope you're going to reel in a fish, uh, you could be throwing a lot of bait in there and never catch a thing. Okay? So this is really what where uh, Monster in particular has some competitive advantage and really can help clients uh, achieve a cost per close loan uh, one third to two thirds less than what they're seeing in the uh, government space. The Pacific Ocean, this is where you need an expert. This is where you need a, a seasoned captain, right? This is where you need a, a marketing partner uh, that knows how to find the fish, uh, knows what bait to use, um, and this is where it will really make the difference uh, versus just putting your boat in the water and hoping that you're going to find fish. You need that fish finder. You need some very specific tools and analysis to be able to make this payoff. This is what Monster does that no one else can help you with. And I, I'm not afraid to share the secret sauce. So I'm going to, I'm going to share the secret sauce right now because I'm, I'm so confident that no one else can produce this. Uh, so you have 35 million records here. Right? That's great, but where are the fish? Okay, Really what you need here is what Monster has. They have a five-year history on every one of these records. So every property that sits here, whether it's the same owner or a former owner, uh, the present owner, we have a five-year history on these records. And what does that allow us to do? So to know somebody does a transaction this month, does it really help you unless you have unless you can have the history behind it to understand what 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 generated that behavior? So you know in these particular cases we let's say we have John Smith's history here, and I know that in in 2015 he purchased this house. In 2016 he did a cash out refinance. In 2017 he did uh, a rate and term refinance. And in 2018, you got a junior mortgage. You got a HELOC. This will tell me a lot about John Smith. Uh, but the fact that he just took a loan maybe in, in 2018 doesn't help me very much. But what it does help me do is help me look at John Smith and say, look at all these behaviors. And let me go in here and use my fish finder and find people that have the same behaviors or the same set of circumstances as John Smith. And then... That is a fish. We found him. Now, uh, what we do with this information is a little bit more complex than this. We actually build uh, propensity models and, and data algorithms that go over top of this to score this data for different transactions. Uh, if you want a cash out borrower, the behavior uh, model is completely different than if you want a rate and term person. If you have a, uh, a an ARM client, you know that you want to uh, convert to uh, being a fixed. That's a different type of model. The point is that we have a fish finder for all the different kind of fish that you could want 
out of the Pacific Ocean here that is the conventional universe. Uh, and that is very, very unique to what we do because we do not work in a query system. Uh, we ingest these 35 million records every two weeks. Uh, they're constantly updated, edited, and appended. We have uh, a full-time data analyst and full-time data engineer and a team of programmers <laughs> just to find these fish. So this may still seem a little bit out there. So let me explain why this is different and why no one else has done this. The, the reason that nobody else does this and this is so special is that it really does. It's not just the, the, the expense of getting this data. And I'll tell you, we get it from CoreLogic. Right? We have a three-year contract with them that renews. So there's a major, major commitment that goes that goes into this. There's a multi-million dollar commitment that we have to do. Whether we do one, uh, whether we have one client or zero clients, we are committed to this. Uh, in addition, like I said, you need to have a data engineer and a data analyst. You need a team of programmers because you have to have uh, the data infrastructure. Coralize well, doesn't provide us the data infrastructure. They provide us the data. We have to put it someplace. We have to figure out how to use it. So, you know, it requires us to have cloud storage. It requires us to have, uh, you know, uh, SQL and MySQL databases. It requires an enormous back-end support to manage this. But the reason we do this really is because you cannot do this any other way. You cannot do this in a query system. A query system works like this. So in a query system, you would ask a question, right? I, I, I think the fish might live here, okay? Uh, but this is so big, right? What you're saying in the query system is, I think the fish live here, okay? And you're saying, well, this LTV, uh, you know, 80% LTV, uh, this date range, right? Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And you're hoping that's where the fish live. You know, these states, right? It's way too big to do that in, in the Pacific Ocean. You cannot do that, right? What has to happen is that you have to have a fish finder that looks at every record all over this entire thing and then scores them, right? So, you know, there's a propensity score that goes into here. And then the database will look at this and say, okay, tell me which states these uh, a client is in, right? And what loan amount range they, they, want, they want to play in. And then, okay, now go find the people with the proper propensity score, which could live here, they could live here, they could live here, they could be here in the database, they could be all over. And here's the cool thing, that once you come out the other side of, of not in a query system, but in our system, all these fish are aggregated into one single file. We're in a query system, you might get a fish here, a fish here, and this little tiny speck, but you're not going to be able to get nothing to fish. That is important to you because Two things. Uh, to get a response is not the end goal. The end goal is to convert lines, right? And if you're just fishing here, uh, you can get some response and not get a single loan. And you can do it over and over and over again, which you know as well as I know, that translates into cost per acquisition. It also, it also translates into opportunity cost, right? I know that you guys have loan officers sitting in those seats every day. And that, that really what your, your job is to make sure they have enough marketing, not just to produce loans for you, but to produce loans for themselves so they can feed their family. Right? You have a responsibility. Otherwise, your loan officer will get up and walk out and they'll go someplace else. So what this means to you is a cost for a closed loan between $500 and $1,000 versus double to triple that in, in the uh, in your in, in the uh, Guppy space. So, our conversion rate, uh, to give you an idea, in the uh, in the governing space, uh, is about five to six percent. Uh, in the conventional space, using this method, we see a fifteen percent or better conversion, uh, which means when the same amount of money spent, uh, you know, even if it was the same amount of phone calls, you would produce two to three times the loans. I'll give you a recent example. A recent example, we did 10,000 uh, 10, record drop for, for somebody here. Uh, they got um, uh, 160 phone calls, and out of the 160 phone calls, had 17 loans. Um, out of those, uh, 
with those 17 loans, they still had 43 that they were working on. Uh, and based on their normal conversion, if you take that and look at it and say, okay, let me look at those 43 loans. Uh, if they just maintain that, that same uh, percentage they had across the, uh, the board, they would have produced over 20 loans. So let's just look at the 17 loans they produced and the cost. The cost to generate each of those loans for those people was $480. I do a lot, a lot of marketing for FHA and conventional. I mean, for FHA and VA, a lot. Uh, and I can tell you that nobody's at $480 alone in, in, the, in the Gubby space. Okay, to summarize, uh, there's three reasons that uh, that people don't market in the conventional space. Uh, number one, they don't think there is uh, enough money in those loans. Well, we've shown you that that's not the case overall. It's kind of a misguided way of thinking. Uh, number two, that they're just harder to do. Uh, while that may be true, it's also a necessity to do these, and I've shown you why. Uh, and lastly, um, that it's too hard to market. Well, I've shown you that there are, there are people out there, us in particular, who know exactly how to find these fish. Uh, and know how to bring them to you, right? And that doesn't have to be a fear or a worry uh, anymore. This is for you if uh, you want to scale your business. Uh, if you're a smaller company that doesn't want to try to compete with bigger wallets, let's be honest, uh, or if you're independent and new, this is a great way to create a niche for yourself um, that is going to set you apart and not put you in a position to be competed with by every person, by 100% of the marketplace. Okay, so what Monster can do to help you is a couple things. We have the data and the data. So we have the database and we have the data, right? This is it. We have the fish. We know where they are, right? So, uh, and, and secondly, you don't have to be a creative genius. And the reason is that Monster does not take outside copy. To be honest with you, we have our own. We have our own R&D budget. Uh, we pre-test everything that we utilize here. Uh, we know what the response rates are going to be before we ever send a piece of mail for you. Uh, and the advantage to that is that, that with data advantage and already knowing what the response rate is going to be, uh, you can't go wrong as long as you do exactly what we tell you to do. There is a, there is a formula for this. You don't have to figure it out on your own. Uh, in closing, why would you not use conventional as part of your arsenal? Uh, it's a perfect insurance policy against rising rate markets. Uh, it will insulate you against fluctuation and give you all the opportunity you need to scale your business. Uh, and with Monster as uh, your marketing partner, uh, you don't have to worry about that third thing, which is not knowing and not being successful at business.